You guys are in for a treat. This is Miss Christy Puckett. And I just noticed, Christy, in your um, bio that I forgot to say you were the 2019 Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom Teacher of the Year because I was so excited to say that you're the 2020 National Excellence in Teaching Agriculture Award winner. So we are super proud of Christy and all of her accomplishments. And um, you guys are in for a fantastic treat today. And I'm going to turn it over to Christy now. Thanks for joining us. Okay, Audrey is going to man the, the slideshow. So Audrey, if you'll just start that, I'll get started here. The name of my presentation is Environmentally Friendly Ag in the Classroom. And I mainly do this with my fifth graders, but it can be adapted for any grade. Um, I teach uh, third through sixth grade science where I have up until this coming year and I'll just have fourth and through sixth. And so I want to do different things with different classes and I want them to um, eat every class, get to, you know, not have to do it more than once. So uh, that's why I do this with my fifth grade. It's part of their, it's part of what they do. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I went to school here at Maysville. Um, Graduated here, went on to East Central University, got my master's, bachelor's and master's degree there. I've come back to my hometown and taught for 36 years now. Um, I'm married to Michael Joe Puckett for 35 years, and I have two wonderful children. My youngest is Jocelyn, and I don't know if any of you caught her video yesterday or her PowerPoint, um, but she has taught four years uh, in Edmond, and she's single. So if anybody knows anybody for her, she'll love that I did that. Um, and then my oldest is Michael Christopher Puckett, and he is an administrator at the psychiatric hospital in Oklahoma City, Cedar Ridge. Uh, he's married to Ariel Puckett, and they have a precious daughter, and she is Mimi's um, precious princess, and her name is Aurora, and she's three. And she is the apple of all of our eyes. Um, I love to read my favorite author. Yes. I'm going to interrupt you. You don't know this, but Jocelyn has joined this session. So she heard you. Oh, she heard me say that, didn't she? <laughs> That's okay. No, she can, she can find her own if she needs to. I just had to throw that in a little funny for her. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, uh, I love to read. My favorite author is Karen Kingsbury. I don't know if there's any Karen Kingsbury people out there. And I love playing the keyboard. So uh, that's a little bit about myself. My AITC journey began a long, long time ago. And uh, for years here in Maysville, I was the 4-H leader. And I think that's how I got started. Um, the very first workshop I went to, we had it at the county fair. I can remember Jamie Allen presented it and she's lovely. I don't know how many of you know her, but she used to be with the um, Ag in the Classroom, but she's retired now. But I can remember we did the hamburger uh, that like Shelly did yesterday, only we actually physically made the hamburger and that all time famous uh, clucking chicken. So I remember those two things about it that, was hooked, that got me hooked. And so I have attended many of the road trips, one day workshops, I've been to state conferences, I've been to national, I went to Maine and Arkansas, and I've helped develop some curriculum. So, uh, and as Audrey said earlier about the two awards that I've won. So uh, if you do ag in the classroom, guys, apply for these things. I've, I've won uh, several of the um, court council grants. So I know that was mentioned yesterday, but if you're new today, then just uh, go ahead and apply for those. It gives you $500 to buy the supplies to do these workshops and to do these Christy. labs with your kids. Christy, I wanted to interrupt. We have okay. somebody that said yes on Karen Kingberry. She sent me a book after I told her I had met her father-in-law from Bartlesville. Oh, so she is, I've read, every, yeah, I've read every one of them. So I'm waiting for her next one to come out in October. Can't wait. So good, I'm glad I have a friend out there that likes Karen. Okay, so today uh, 
what we're going to talk about is environmental friendly. And that's one thing I do with my fifth grades. We talk about how humans impact the environment. So uh, we're going to, I'm going to talk about an experiment that I do with the kids. Uh, we're going to talk about paper waste and we're going to talk about the two lessons uh, for ag in a classroom is garden in a mailbox and making seed paper. And uh, so the, the main one is the making the paper. So I wanna make sure I get to that. But the first one I start out with um, how humans impact our environment. I didn't bring all the materials like Johnny just did on her workshop. She did a wonderful job. Uh, but things that you will need for that is water, plastic cup, plastic bags, foam squares, plastic wrap, straws, newspaper, facial tissue, and soil. Um, now you can either, you can set this up several ways. Uh, my lab is set up, usually I have four groups. And so each group can make all four of them, or you can each uh, make, have the groups make one at a, you know, just one of them. But what you're essentially doing is you're putting soil in the bag and then you add some water and um, then you put one of the items in it, like uh, newspaper in one bag. and um, one thing you will have to talk to them about because you need to get all of the air out of the bag is making sure they understand the safety. You barely put uh, the straw in there and you suck the air out, but you don't want that straw way down in there. You don't want them sucking soil up in their mouth and stuff. So you need to talk about safety there with them on that. But uh, once you've made all the bags, you put them in a dark place and you check them after a week and you'll see which one deposes, you know, uh, easier and um, so you record how you know what kind of change had made within the week and then they you know some inference questions is why is it important for us to recycle and explain how one of you know one of the materials can be recycled you know and talk about which one can be recycled and this is just a neat introductory uh, experiment to do with the kids to get them thinking about what they can do for our environment and then another thing is called waste not, won't not. And um, it's, it's in the AITC lesson, making paper. So you would read the, the background information, you go vocabulary, you could do any of the different activities with the vocabulary. We do uh, cards or uh, sticky notes and match, you know, the definition to the word. Uh, that way the kids are, you know, learning that uh, the definitions for that um, and discuss why we should be concerned about landfills. I don't think the kids understand when you put something in a trash can, if they do put it in the trash can, you know, where does it go from there? And so I take them on a virtual uh, field trip and the, the YouTube's there, uh, Audrey, if you want to get it going. And it's just about six minutes long and it actually takes them to a landfill so they can see what happens uh, with their trash. And this is a, a, a good way for them to understand uh, that we need to uh, recycle. So um, we'll watch this video here. Another thing that you could do while she's getting it set up is um, go a day without your trash can. Set your trash cans out in the hall, but be sure you tell your custodian and your building principal, you know, what you are doing. And so all the paper goes in the floor that day. And so they can see how much paper that they actually are wasting. And then, uh, of course, you know, you either, depending on how your room's set up, but, you know, then they pick up that and you're going to use that paper for the next activity. Also bring in a personal uh, view on this. Uh, my husband, um, his place of employment shut down. And so he went to truck driving school and we were looking for another uh, career option. And one of the things he had to do was drive a, um, a garbage truck. And uh, so it has made him very much so aware of recycling. And he's, he thinks that if uh, garbage trucks were see-through, that maybe we would not use as much or throw as much trash away. We're here at the 
Lavina Brown Environmental Park. And this is where all the garbage goes from Alachua County, where we live, to be transferred to the landfill where it's going to get disposed of. Uh, the building behind me is the actual tipping floor or the, or the transfer station. And this is where the, the garbage trucks will actually come in. They'll drive up the hill uh, and dump their load onto the floor where it's transferred by a front end loader into a giant pit in the floor. And that goes into our trucks, which we use to ship that to the actual landfill. Uh, each person on average makes about five pounds of garbage per day. So in any given day, about five to 700 tons of garbage comes through this facility. One of the things that when you actually get looking at this garbage, you can see there's a lot of things that can be recycled in it. A lot of cardboard, even a lot of uh, aluminum cans, bottles, plastic. Uh, a lot of that stuff could have been recycled. Unfortunately, because of the way the uh, legislation is, once something hits this floor, it actually becomes municipal solid waste at that point and we can't touch it. Since you can't actually throw away all the garbage into a landfill, we do collect other garbage for recycling and to keep toxic things out of the landfill. And this is where we collect all of our uh, tires, which comes from auto tires, small ones, to giant tractor tires. Also, we collect here is a scrap metal. Metal is one of the easiest things to, re to recycle, so uh, we want to keep that stuff out of the waste stream as well because it is, it is still quite usable. If you look at the, the resource aspect of recycling, it, it is quite important. All plastics are made from oil, or the vast majority of plastics come from oil. And so at some point, we're not going to have that much oil anymore to be making plastic. So if we recover that resource, it's a big deal. Aluminum is one of the biggest, the best things to recycle because it's so environmentally detrimental to local areas to mine the bauxite where aluminum comes from. And so by recycling aluminum, we don't have to pull any more out of the ground, which is a, was a very nasty process, actually. Some of the bauxite mines around the world are some of the most polluted places on the planet. So where we are right now is actually underneath the tipping floor, and this is where our trucks come in and they get loaded up. And uh, there we have a couple cranes up top that actually will scoot the garbage into the, into the truck and even out the loads so it's not unbalanced. Uh, once they're filled up to about 35 to 40,000 pounds, they head out and go to the new river and, and dump the trash. And that's, just, that's how it works. Welcome to New River Regional Landfill. We're servicing the largest geographic area in the state of Florida. Once the waste comes here, it's got to be completely managed. If it's mismanaged, it can create uh, some health issues and can be a real environmental threat. For uh, hundreds of years, people dispose of their waste. They just threw it in open lands. They threw it in the woods. They threw it in streams. Uh, they didn't know what they were doing. They don't know why, uh, you know, they were just out of sight, out of mind. What we have underneath the, the, the solid waste here is a double liner system. It's a leachate collection. The leachate is, is by gravity flow, flows into these ponds. From here, it's uh, piped directly to uh, Florida State Prison Wastewater Treatment Plant. And uh, so no time is the, is the leachate not being um, uh, com completely managed uh, on this site. At approximately 50 feet in elevation is where the, where the trucks come in. So it's going to be about 85 feet in height when, when it's all over with. Once you reach a, a permitted height, then uh, the, the, by regulations you're required to cap it to keep any rainfall from, from additional leachate being generated. And when you do that, it's a term called dry tombing of waste. When you dry tomb waste, it slows down the biological process. It may take years, it may take hundreds of years before the stuff breaks down. There's been landfills that in, in Florida that have been, um, been dug up and they found a newspaper that that's, uh, you can still read it after 75 years. Modern households today, this has, has things that we refer to as, as household hazardous waste. We have cleaners, we have aerosols of different types. So the type of waste that we generate today is even more of a threat uh, to the environment. Plus, uh, there's more people. So we're here now at the uh, hazardous waste collection facility, and uh, this is where we actually pull off all the, the dangerous stuff that we really don't want getting to a landfill. So that's stuff like, uh, like mixed fuels, oils, used motor oil, um, any kind of aerosol cans, rechargeable batteries, mostly rechargeable batteries has, have heavy metals in them. You don't want heavy metals getting to the landfill because they can get into groundwater afterward. Uh, but any kind of like uh, alkaline batteries can actually just be thrown away and put in the landfill because they're not toxic at all anymore. One of the things we do collect here is uh, fluorescent bulbs. Uh, these do contain a tiny amount of vaporized mercury. So we don't want these getting crushed and put in something, you know, getting into the air. Mercury can be pretty nasty. And it's just like that. 
We'll do one more. One of the things that's come real important recently is recycling of electronics. One of the main things is why they don't want these in the landfills. They do contain lead. Um, and so you just, you're just keeping heavy metals out of the groundwater is the, is the end result of, of this, too. So. We're a very, um, very wasteful society. First of all, we require a lot of packaging um, that all winds up at, at the landfills. And then also we, we buy products that are disposable. It's, it's cheaper to go buy another one than, than to, to fix the one that you already have. What can we do to, to, to limit the amount of waste that comes into the landfill? The primary thing you can do in your, in your household is, is to recycle more. Be conscious of it. There's not one easy answer. It's kind of everybody has to do their part in order, in order to make less garbage, you know, from the manufacturer on down to the consumer. Great. So I, I like uh, what it says there that everybody needs to do their part. Um, you know, don't be the problem, be the solution. And uh, so I really, I really, I really like that. Um, so when I talked about uh, a while ago where they throw their trash on the floor for the, the day, the week, however you want to do it, then you're going to use that paper for the next activity. And that paper will need to be shredded. Uh, all the white paper will need to uh, be shredded up. Uh, then you need to have tissue paper. Uh, any color will do. Um, water and uh, a hot pot. So somehow to make the water hot. You can use a microwave or whatever you, you have available there, but you need hot water. And this will be a part that you will need to do as the teacher. Uh, you'll need to take four craft sticks and you'll need to glue those craft sticks together. Um, I, I create uh, little packets for the kids in which I had created for you guys too, uh, if we was gonna be in person. But uh, here it is and you glue it together. It says to use waterproof glue. I just used hot glue and we put it together and it doesn't have to be straight, but if you're one of those people that it bothers, then go ahead and make it straight. Uh, you will need cheesecloth. And now I, I, I bought some cheesecloth, but you also can get the towels uh, and cut these up also. Um, but some of this that I have is the cheesecloth. You attach the cheesecloth to your frame and it's, um, it said, the procedure said to use a staple and staple it on there. I didn't want to do that because I want to be able to get the cheesecloth back off again. So I, I use these little clippies to do that. And so they'll, they, they just uh, wrap it around the frame, put the clippies on it with the eight binder clips. And then you're also going to need a, a big bow. Now you're going to need a real deep bow. I made some of this up earlier with a shallower bow and I got paper everywhere in here. Um, and then um, I have found that the stick blender works better instead of just a regular blender. And this is easily uh, cleaned up too. So uh, stick blender would work better to, if you got access to that. And some seeds. And I just, I have a box of seeds that you can get like at the dollar store or you can uh, get the package seeds and we'll talk about this too. There's another lesson that goes along with seeds. And then um, and then also you could use cookie cutters and that's optional. But what you'll need to do, and I want to show you the kids, I, I like, I, I was excited this year about the cookie cutters, but I hadn't got to do it with my kids. But you take this and probably a little cup uh, like that you use for when you brush your teeth, uh, maybe one or two of those will work. And the thicker, the more you put on here, the thicker it is, the better it is to get out. But they just plop that on there and they spread it all to the edges. And I give them a towel like this. And these are just old rags that I cut up and they'll place it on there. And then uh, once you put all of your uh, pulp on there, and let me show you the pulp, I'm sorry, I didn't do that. Here's the pulp. So that's what you need the stick blender for. So that has my tissue paper that has the white shredded paper and I shredded my tissue paper and then, my, and then I added the water and then I just blend it and it makes this pulp up right here. And the tissue paper is strictly there to give it its color, uh, whatever color you want to use. Yes, 
Christy. Uh, we did have, um, I hope I say her name correctly, but a Shay Webster says yes. he lives in your hometown. Can I get the materials? <laughs> so she wants to know if she can get one of those kits. <laughs> sure. Yes. I know where Shay lives or I know where her mama lives. I talked with her mother. So yes, Shay, right. you could be privileged and sure have a kit. She will be excited. I'm sure. <laughs> Okay, so you make the pulp, and then you'll lay, you'll lay this on a flat surface, and then they'll put the pulp in here, and they'll just spread it out. The directions say to add the seeds to the pulp before you put it on here. I don't, I don't like that. I like adding the seeds to this. Um, I want to see the seeds, and when I mixed it, when the kids mixed it in with the pulp, you couldn't see the seeds once it went on here. I want them to see the seeds on it. So... Um, so you do that, and the main thing is you take the bottom part of this towel, and you're gonna push all of that water out. Um, you're gonna have to push a lot of water out and, and kind of dry it out. And I, they're, they're gonna need more than just this. They're gonna need some paper towels also. Uh, they need to push real hard to get all of, as much water out as they can. And, and I sprinkled the seeds on there and then I started pressing. That presses the seeds into it. Because you can tell from my pulp I made earlier today that there's still water in here. Um, and I just add, I can't tell you how much to add. It depends on how much pulp you're making. Um, one thing that I, I do with my kids is you can have them measure out the paper the day before. I will tell you that uh, with my cookie cutter one experiment that I did earlier, that um, one cup of white shredded paper and 10 pieces of the tissue paper made somewhere between seven to eight of these little cookies. And so you might measure it that way. You can have the kids measure the day before and then put the hot water on it, let it set, because you're going to want to let it set for a while. They can come in. They can help you with the stick blender if you want to do that. I have a big bucket so that most of it stays down inside there. But you've got to shred it up real good and make the pulp. And then press it out. And then what happens was um, I went ahead and took the clips off, and some of these will tear apart. You have to, you'll have to, and it happens to me, and you'll just have to correct them for the next time. This is what comes out uh, of this. And it's, it's, not, it's not pretty, it's not um, even, um, but they have recycled and made new paper. And now, and you can see the seeds, I sprinkled the seeds on. This can, you could take this and break it up in pieces or however you wanna do it, plant it where you would like to have some wild flowers come up and uh, eventually the paper dissolves and goes away and into the soil um, and helps enrich the soil and then your seeds will grow. So that is seed paper. So with that said, I had seen on Pinterest where teachers were always on Pinterest, but I had seen on Pinterest where they had done seed paper and they had perfect hearts. And I thought, how did they do that? Because this is what the kids do, you know, and it's jagged trying to get and trying to get it out of here is hard. And so uh, I read around it and they use cookie cutters. I said, Oh, won't that be fun? So I ordered tractor cookie cutters and, uh, and a barn cookie cutter. And um, so that determined my color of tissue that I would use. And this, I was, I'm so excited to do it with the kids. I, I hope we get to do it. This is so much easier than this, but I still think they need to experience both, but it's easier to get it out of here. Uh, you're still gonna need the cheesecloth. You're still going to uh, put your cookie cutter on your cheesecloth. You're still gonna have to take paper towels and push out as much water as you can. I used um, one of those, the, the little cup, probably a cup and a half, the little bitty um, paper cups, probably a cup and a half to make mine. Now that was thicker, so it depends on how thin you want. You can tell that this is thin, but that's how the frame is. So the thicker you want it or you know how thin you want it. Um, I even read somewhere where someone used this paper and made a wedding invitation. So that was interesting, I, that's a lot of work to me. But anyhow, I thought this was very cute. And so I put the word out to some, some of my friends, my church friends, about I need some tissue paper. 
I think you're, that's how you could get it. Your family put the word out, you want tissue paper and that way you're not out money buying tissue paper. Um, someone is asking, where did you get the cookie cutters oh, from? Okay, I'm sorry, uh, from Amazon. And they were pretty cheap. Um, in fact, I had these to give away, but oh well. I'll have them for the kids to, to use. They, they weren't that expensive. And they have farm animals too. I just chose the tractor and the barn. And mainly because there's a lady in our church who our dollar gen, local Dollar General calls her when they're ready to get rid of stuff. And she'll go buy stuff up and it's in our church shed. And she said, oh, there's red and green paper out in the shed. And I uh, said, so where? And so she went with me and sure enough, I mean, two big boxes of the leftover Christmas paper, tissue paper of the red and green. Perfect, that's what I need. So I was able to make the tractor see recycled paper. Isn't that just the cutest thing? I can't wait to do that with the kids. Another thing that's you can so do cute. I also would like to just say, I've done this with um, construction paper. So if you cannot get tissue paper, it will work with construction paper, but um, you have to soak it for a long time to get it so it's not so hard on the blender. Right. Uh, but that is an option. But I love the tractor. Even the tissue paper, you still have to soak it a while. That's why I'm saying, you know, if you do the measuring with the kids, make for sure, you know, uh, even the day before you can do that measuring activity, have it ready. Put the water in it, leave it overnight, come back and use the blender on it. It, it really needs to soak and um, to be pliable where you can use the blender on it. But you could even, um, at Christmas, I could see you making little ornaments or whatever. Put a, um, a, a hoe up here, put a string through it and hang it up, what it, you know, whatever you like. Um, another thing I thought of that would be great, and oh, here's the barn. I used the red for the barn. I just think they're so cute. I love them. I can't wait to do these with the kids. But And, and like I said, I like seeing the seeds. I don't know if y'all can do, see that. But I think it's important for the kids to see the seeds on there. Um, another thing, uh, what, I forgot train of thought here where I was going with that. But, um, oh, another thing that I thought would be fun with the seed part is let's uh, do a uh, herb garden. So uh, you can get little flower pots at Dollar General, you get two for a dollar. So that makes them 50 cents a piece. Or yesterday, I know um, Shelly talked about using uh, shoe boxes and you can plant things in shoe boxes. Um, you could be very resourceful if you don't have a garden, but um, let's, you could use, make herb garden. So use your herb seeds on this and then plant them and then the kids can see that happening. So I think that would be great. Um, and one thing about the seeds is I also use the um, garden, uh, a garden in the mailbox lesson from AITC. And that lesson, they, they, they write to um, companies to get their catalogs. And then the kids are t need to, or the portion that I use, the kids need to research to see what kind of seed grows best where you're at in your area. And then they would, then we could get those seeds. And I, um, I've, I've, I've always just bought them, but I bet someone would give, give them to you or donate them if you ask for it. So that's, and there's a worksheet to do that. Uh, they could work in groups to figure that out, to see what would grow best. Um, you could look at the herbs uh, to see what would work best there. So that that's a good, one of the good lessons um, to determine what to do there. Okay, so um, another thing, and I'm sorry guys, I wish I had brought it with me, but I left them laying at home. We've had to switch places where I was going to do this workshop, but I left them at home. But I wanna to talk to you about the additional reading. Um, there is several books out there and I like to read because um, making paper talks about where paper comes from, trees, um, and uh, you talk about that with them um, and preserving our trees. And one of the books is What Does It Mean to Be Green? Um, Planting the Trees in Kenya. Uh, that is an excellent book. And um, 
uh, talks about that book talks about being the the solution and not the problem and how they had used up all the trees and and so the little girl had decided that you know she would be the solution not the problem and they would replant trees for that and save save the land i know that's further down it's another one about saving the trees and planting them uh, why should we recycle let, let them know, not just the video, but read about it. These are, I know these are picture books and I do this with fifth grade, but they like picture books too. I heard someone say that yesterday about, I think they were, they were teaching junior high. The kids still like that. So um, I think it's fine to share these books with them. Um, there's another one, We Plant a Tree. Um, that That's a good one to read to them. That goes along with this lesson. Um, and I, the, the experiment at the beginning, we use the Pearson science, interactive science. And so that's in my lesson for my fifth graders. And then I use these two Oklahoma Ag and Classroom lessons for this. And what, and what I've always done is most generally, I don't have a standalone lesson. I usually use them to enhance uh, my science that I'm supposed to do. But any of the, the AITC lessons, are great to stand alone or however you want to do it. They're, they're wonderful like, lessons and the, the standards are there for you. Yes. I know you had a list and I don't think I saw it on there, but someone asked, did she say that the one, that one of the books was called Making Paper? Um, she said you froze for a second. No, the, the Ag in the Classroom okay. lesson is Making Paper, but yeah. these books, uh, my, the, my favorite book is Planting the Trees in Kenya. I recommend that one uh, to, for anybody to find and get. And you can get those off of Amazon or um, Barnes and Noble, you know, but I, I recommend, you know, finding those books. Go to your lo the local library and see if they carry any of these about trees. Just anything about trees and how you replant the trees. Because if we don't, then, you know, we're not going to have the trees for the paper and, and therefore, so I hope that answered the question. And then, uh, of course, your uh, the, how to make seed paper. I took it off of Pinterest, and that was Christine's crafts. I adapted it. I didn't use it exactly how they do. And my, and the AITC lesson does have a recipe on there, how to make paper. Uh, I don't follow that one either. Kind of went off and did my own thing there. But uh, I felt like this was the easiest to do with my fifth grade students, this one. So that's why I uh, went with it. But uh, there's lots you could do there. Um, so, and if you have any questions, you can find me at, there's my email address and stuff. If you have questions about that or how to apply to be an uh, Oklahoma Hag in the Classroom Teacher of the Year or even the national, um, I, I I want everybody to do it. It's it. This is a wonderful thing, wonderful resource for teachers, and the lessons are right there, easy to follow. So, is there any questions, Christy? Why don't you share with them um, some of the activities that you've done that helped you to receive those awards? Um, just some of the things that you included to give them a, an idea of, of a variety of activities that they could do. Okay. Well, one thing I do every year, I've done for several years now, is I host an Ag Day here for the entire elementary. So I organize it. I bring in the community, some community people. Um, Emily claimed last year, Sherry's been down and, and, and done some things. Audrey's been down and, and helped with it. Um, Melody, I think it's your turn. Uh, but anyhow, um, I bring in, we set up stations. Emily did, I can't even remember now, she did one, uh, one uh, somebody made butter with them. I don't remember who did that. I have I a lady. Pumpkin putty. Pumpkin putty, okay. Yeah, for that slime. <laughs> yes. And um, uh, the, yes, you are missing fun, Melody. Um, we have, I have a lady here that raises chickens. And so she brought her chickens in and talked to them. And then my FFA group, I always get them involved, the kids involved. These are kids that I have taught. And it's so rewarding to see them come back and teach these lessons. I had one that, that taught the picnic in the basket lesson to the kids because she had learned that in my classroom. Then she was able to do that. Uh, some of my 4-H kids, but the, um, the Ag Department, the FFA officers, they came out and they set up a station and did the 
egg, uh, chicken cycle. Uh, I've had the commodity truck, they'll come out. The dairy truck will come out. There's lots of resources out there for you. I have a, a family in town that are farmers and they bring the tractors out every year. One year I didn't bring them and the kids were very disappointed. They love to climb on the tractors and uh, learn about that. Uh, I had a lady last year that brought her horses in and they got to do that. Um, so we set up the different stations. The morning is preschool through second grade and the afternoon is the older kids, third through six. And they all get to go through the different stations and, and uh, learn things about ag in the classroom and or agriculture in general. I think it's important, you know, it, it's the old cliche, everybody, you'll ask the kids and they'll say, you know, the food comes from here would be Super C uh, or Walmart. And so they got to learn where their food comes from. I started a small garden last year. I have a little tiny raised bed, but the kids were so excited. The only thing that grew in it was radishes. I do not claim to have the green thumbs. No, my brother got all of that. We were raised with gardens. I always was in on the harvest side. I was never on the planting side. So that was been an area that I have um, probably stayed away from, but I, jumped out there and did it. And that's the main thing, just jumping out there and, and you may have failed things, but you still have tried something. And um, let's see, what else have I, um, I brought community in for read accurate ag books. I organized that and every classroom had someone come in and read to them. And um, our principal's um, mother came and read to my class and I just loved her because she brought in activities to do with the book too. I just asked them to read the book, but she extended it and went further with it. And a lot of my parents did that. Um, go to your ag teacher. They're a good resource. Um, our principal used to be the ag teacher here. So he, he is very supportive of what I do. Always has been. So I'm fortunate there. Um, what else have I done? Oh, I used, uh, once a month, I would read a book to the entire elementary. I would dress in character, and then they would come to the lab and do uh, something that goes along with the book. Now, what I had done is, prior to that, my fifth and sixth graders learned the book, learned the lessons. They became the teacher. So you're, the kids are learning um, how to be uh, leaders, and so um, that's a good thing to do. I started a group this year uh, called GLAMS, Girls Learning Agricultural Math and Science, and that came from my friend who just did the workshop, Johnny, and so she and I collaborated, and so we started that. I didn't get to meet with them as often as I wanted to, but we did. We made a, a lip balm. We made pumpkins and gave away to the teachers. We did, um, we did the soil, uh, edible soil. So we did a, a lesson on soil. And uh, so that was fun. I've done, I uh, do robotics with my kiddos. And so one of the things you do with that is uh, instead of going for the can or whatever, they lift up um, uh, like a plastic hay bale. So you can, you can relate it back to agriculture that way. Anything, any, anything can be adapted back to agriculture because it all begins there. So um, Audrey, have I forgot anything? I don't know. I've done so much that um, it's hard to remember it. Tell them about your uh, passports. Oh, so the, so to be a national winner, you, you have to develop a lesson and, and submit that after your, uh, the, your state winner, then you, it is a, it's a, I won't, I won't lie to you. It's a big process. It's a big process. And it would the have been state, so, the state contest is not a big process. No, it's no. very easy. Apply for state. Yes. Everyone <laughs> apply for state. If we will help you with national. You can apply for state. It's easy, but the national is a little bit more intense and it probably should be. Um, but it wouldn't have been so bad if I had surgery in the middle of trying to apply for this. But the lesson I developed, and it was a small one day lesson in my head that developed into a week long lesson. And I had to pull my daughter in, Jocelyn, and she helped me. And at one point I said, oh, just forget it, sister, it's too much. And she said, no, mom. And you know, the lesson learned there is push on and do it. But um, set up the stations in your classroom where, um, 
and it developed because I started the garden and and the, the one thing that grew was radishes. Well, the kids had never even tasted that or didn't know anything about it. And I thought, we need to research where our food comes, you know, where it originated. And so um, we had, there was about four or five of us teachers here that was going to take a trip, a cruise, and I needed my passport. So I had to go up and get one. And, and as I'm going through that process, I thought, wouldn't that be neat to give them a passport and they go to a station and you might have kiwi sitting out there. They've not ever tasted kiwi. Radish sitting out there for them to taste. Uh, and they learn, there's a card for them to learn about that, that particular vegetable or, or fruit, whatever you have out there. And once they've done that station, then give them a generic sticker. And, and oh, and the passport had different things on there, like the name of the the, the fruit or vegetable, uh, things that they had to learn off the card, where it came, where it originated, uh, draw a picture of it, and then they got a stamp, which was a generic stamp, and to put in their passport. And so you actually make a little passport for them and that, where they travel from station to station. Someone asked me, um, so what are you gonna do about um, their little hands? Where if you give them a toothpick, or you have, you know, you could get parent volunteers or even older kids or whatever to help you there. If they had a toothpick to, to, you know, to, to get their piece of fruit or whatever, then you don't have all the little hands there. Or you could have someone there with gloves on to hand that, that to them. So that's one of the lessons I, I developed. And um, I was very, uh, it was humbling to win a national, you know, to be from Oklahoma and not just Oklahoma, rural Oklahoma and to win a national, I'm gonna cry. Y'all do this to me every time. And to win national, you know, that's such a big thing. And I understand where the seniors are coming from this year because I didn't get to walk across that stage either, but um, to receive my award, but it's still an honor, such an honor, such an honor to win that. And Christy, so. we are so proud of you. Um, I had one person ask, they had a question, if you would be willing to share the passport template. Yes. Um, so they can. Yes, I have. We ha I have that where um, Jocelyn helped me do that. Uh, so yes, I could do that. I think that we have that from your you um, application. Okay. We'll look and see, and we'll we'll make sure that her lesson is in her resource folder for today. Right. Um, and it has the objectives that go along. You know, you have to do all of that. It's just writing. It's like writing. And like I said, it ended up being more than a one day thing. I thought I'd just do passports and that was it. But you got to do things to get there. So anyhow, it ended up being a big lesson. But Yes, and we are super proud of Christy, and um, she will get to walk across the stage next year. We're going to make sure she walks across that stage. Uh, we, uh, we are so proud of her. Um, for the state awards, since, since she talk, brought that up and talked about it, for the state awards, you can apply for that in um, between October and December, in that we will have that whenever we do our... Um, our contest typically, typically starts October 1st and runs through December 31st. So we hope that everyone will apply for that. And again, it's just sharing your story, telling us what you do in your classroom, your experience with Ag in the Classroom. Um, don't, don't think that you don't do enough. Uh, everyone that does something, you do enough. So share your story. And uh, we've got lots of teachers that have won in the past that I'm sure would be great uh, resources for you and would love to help you and they've been presenting yesterday and today and they'll be presenting the rest of this week so uh, reach out and we can get you connected with them it's great it's a good thing good lessons i love it um, i've been using it i've taught in every area here at mainsville and from kindergarten up and so i use it everywhere i've used it in my english classes which i'm going to be doing seventh and eighth again this year english uh, plus four through six science. And I use it in every class. My yearbook staff, I, I'm in charge of yearbook. I'm yearbook advisor. They were part of my ag day. You know, I said, okay, guys. And so we used our time in class and they did the clucking chicken with the kids this year. And so they prepared them and they went out and taught the lesson. So I involved, the, I think it's great to involve the kids somehow. Ask your older kids to help you. So. All right, any final questions for Christy? Everyone's saying you did a great job. 
What you guys don't know is that she switched locations and computers uh -huh. multiple times and she's in her new room at the high school that she's not even had class in yet and she brought in decorations to put behind her. So <laughs> that was all last night after about five o'clock. So yes. she's worked hard to get ready for this one and right. Christy you did fantastic. Yeah. You are well deserving of the awards and we appreciate all of the passion and dedication that you bring to teaching and agriculture and ag in the classroom. We love you so much. Well, thank you. But I, I want to put a shout out to you ladies because y'all make it and y'all make it fun for us and y'all are there and you're very supportive. And like I said, I've gone through Jamie and I've gone through Dana and now with all of you three of you, Audrey's been there a while. And so uh, not to age you, Audrey, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> Y'all are wonderful. I love you guys. Y'all are family. That's, you know, that's how we look at it. Y'all are family. So. I agree. And uh, Christy Jocelyn just sent you three hearts and said, good job, mom. So she's not, <laughs> she's not too upset with you. She's not too mad. Uh, at I yeah. <laughs>